Hello, my name is Hunter Spencer, and I'll be your meteorologist this evening. We're going to talk a little bit about how some easy steps you can take to predict the weather yourself. A lot of times, radars are not all that accurate and are kind of confusing to read. We're going to talk a little bit about, about radars, and we're going to talk about some steps that you can take on how you can predict the weather yourself. Doppler radars actually send out radiation waves called microwaves. Uh, microwaves are then sent out and then taken back in uh, for calculation. These calculations will actually tell us uh, the particles and will tell us the size of the particles and tell us a lot about what's going on. Um, but as we can see from this radar here, put that up there, we can see a lot of green, uh, which a lot of people make that out to be, oh, that's rain. Oh, no, that's not rain. Uh, for the most part, this can be clouds, or this can be uh, what could be rain. Um, and let's take this, and let's see the actual precipitation that came up. This is the actual precipitation that fell from this storm. The storm is not showing a lot of precipitation. It is showing a lot of dust. It is showing a lot of cloud cover. Now, why do they do that, per se? Why do they show a radar full of what looks to be a lot of precipitation and it's not actually precipitation. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they can't really predict what is going to happen. I'm going to teach you a few ways that you can teach yourself how to predict the weather as opposed to relying on just the weatherman. The first step you need to take in order to predict the weather is to simply look up. Clouds are a great indicator on as to what is going to happen next. The first one we have is the nimbostratus cloud. The nimbostratus cloud is associated with a formless shape um, and can bring a lot of rain. Uh, typically not really associated with much uh, hail or any sleet. Um, this one mostly takes rain um, and it will look like rain is coming at you as the cloud is coming at you. Um, typically formless, like I said, um, and I would get out of the way of this one. If it's going to come at you, you're going to get rained on. Don't plan that picnic, uh, whatever you're going to do. Second of all, we got the cirrus cloud. The cirrus cloud is a long and very atmospheric cloud. The cirrus cloud is very, very high up in the atmosphere and carries dust particles. These dust particles form with H2O vapors which then will bring down rain. Um, if you see the cirrus clouds, uh, you can probably expect rain within the next 36 hours. Next up, we have the autocumulus clouds. The autocumulus clouds are basically patchy clouds. Um, they take um, bits of water. They don't really have enough for it to drop. However, when these accumulate, uh, they create uh, cumulus clouds. Um, Whenever you see these, you can probably predict um, rain within the next 24 hours. Um, sailors often use this and call it mackerel, uh, mackerel clouds. Next up, we have the mammatus clouds. Mammatus clouds are a, um, basically a product of a cumulus clouds, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, a mammatus cloud is, has an egg-shaped uh, bottom, it looks like a bunch of eggs on the bottom or an egg crate, if you will. Um, and this can hold lots of water or uh, associated with sleet and snow and hail. Um, they are real, real low to the ground um, and very intimidating, actually. They're, they're, they're pretty cool looking. Next, we have the circulonimbus cloud. The circulonimbus cloud is often associated with an anvil shape and is uh, pretty prevalent. prevalent for huge, huge storms. Um, a lot of these storms that we see uh, turn into what we call supercells. Uh, supercells can be anything from just severe lightning, uh, thunderstorms, all the way up from tornadoes to hurricanes. Um, these, these clouds create massive, massive uh, amounts of rain. And as you can see, as tall as they are, they can hold lots of precipitation. Well, that's all for the clouds. Let's go to the next step. Step number two, feel and smell. 
A lot of times we can tell our local weather by simply taking a uh, measurement of the, of the wind. We can take grass and throw it into the wind and we can tell which direction that goes in. If it's in the eastern direction, we know that there is storms coming. Also, by smelling, we can smell the flowers around us and we can smell swamps, uh, trees, and other various things that are around you. Um, and we can tell if storms are coming. Trees, flowers, and swamps, uh, they all try to get rid of their excess waste before a storm comes and makes them pretty smart, smarter than we are anyways. Let's go ahead and go to step three. Step three is to simply pay attention. A lot of times I can't particularly tell you what exactly is going to happen um, in your own area, but there's certain things in your own area that you can manage yourself and can tell regionally what's going to happen. My predictions uh, are mostly based on temperature. Uh, for the Tennessee area, I have noticed that whenever temperature drops, um, it's usually fine. It, it's temperature goes back to the norm. Um, and then when we see a spike uh, in temperature, we can usually predict that within the next 48 to 72 hours, um, there's probably going to be some precipitation following. Um, my grandmother used to tell me that uh, her knee used to swell up whenever it was going to rain. I don't know if I'd use that for a barometer or not, but um, you can come up with your own predictions. Thank you so much for following me in this how-to guide on how you can uh, kind of predict on what is going to happen next in your weather system. If you don't have a smartphone on you and you don't have a TV on you, this is a great way to predict the weather.